Hey guys, this is Sebastian, this is the Cyber Casual YouTube channel where you get the best insights and knowledge of cross reality and artificial intelligence. And if you want to stay informed and updated of these areas, make sure to subscribe now because then you will understand that the VR hype or the VR industry isn't dead yet and will not be in the next couple of weeks, years, stuff like that. Because I've read that in the international press so many times and again and again there are always articles about these so-called experts saying the whole industry is done, the technology will never reach the mass market and mass adoption and this is this is hilarious. I mean <laughs> this is funny in some ways but anyway I don't want to be offensive. I just summarized for you the five most important things while this won't happen and this is what this video is all about. So let's Dive right in, okay? Check it out. So the first mistake so many people are doing, maybe conscious doing, is the wrong interpretation of the innovation hype cycle. I can make a whole video about this, but I want to make it quick and dirty. I want to make it short so you get the basic understanding of how it should be. I've prepared something. See, this is the general hype cycle of technology from Gartner. And you can see here is the peak, here is a very low point and what all, well not all, but most press does is just to show the left side of it, okay? So they say something like, yeah, we had the peak with the Oculus Rift or with the HTC Vive and now it goes down, down, down until the whole technology dies. But it don't die, it just goes into a plateau and see what happens here. It enters the plateau and a high growth adoption fast starts. 20 to 30 percent of the potential audience audience has adopted the innovation and what you need to do as well you need to connect it the innovation hype cycle with the technology adoption life cycle which is this one down here the green one and then you can segment the whole graphs into areas which means the innovators, the early adapters, the early majority, the late majority, the laggers, the vigorous resistors, the people who are using the technology. Okay, you can segment the people into the majority. And what you can see here, at the peak, only the early adapters has or are using in a hype fast the technology. And after the peak has arrived and it goes down, there's the critical mass, meaning the early and late majority using the technology in their everyday lives. And also, if we look back at the innovation hype cycle of Gartner again, negative press begins. So this is a good sign, the negative press begins and then it goes all the way down until we have the critical mass, the early majority and the late majority and then get into a plateau where the innovation has been arrived in our everyday lives, in a society, which is really, really good. And just to make one last sentence, innovation often is a question about time, not about general adoption, okay? Next thing is this little friend, the Oculus Go. <sighs> it's switch off, honestly. <laughs> it was released on May the 1st, and since the release date, nearly 300,000 copies of this VR headset, of the first standalone VR set, got sold. This is the first VR standalone headset which has ever been on the market. And you don't need an external device, a strong gaming PC or anything like that. And it costs only around 200 or 250 bucks. You can now see the trend that the Oculus Go gets sold so many times and in comparison to other VR headsets, you can expect that the Oculus Go will be sold nearly over 1 million times until the end of the year, probably. And also, there will be a Vive Focus, the rival VR headset from HTC, which will be in a close price range. So the standalone VR headset makes virtual reality more accessible for more people. Until now, you can see that many people are buying these headsets. Number three are the tech top five leaders, and I don't want to spend that much time on that because I will release a video about this content in the next couple of days. So make sure to subscribe now. <laughs> no, honestly, make this real quick. Amazon. Amazon released the Sumerian platform where you can use the 
um, plug and play tools of Samarian to build your own VR device, uh, your, your own VR device, your own VR experiences, your own VR apps, which is pretty cool and easy to use. Apple has already announced that they will be releasing an augmented reality headset in the future and probably this will be a cross reality headset. We don't know. They just keep it a secret for a really long time, but you get some details here and there from it. But they will definitely release a headset. Microsoft is the leader in the mixed reality area and there will be a HoloLens 2, which is pretty cool. And when you can see they bought just GitHub to get deeper to the developers, they will invest more and more in that. Facebook is the VR leader right now because of Oculus, because of the Facebook platforms and the other platforms which Facebook already has bought. And Google is integrated in so many headsets with their own Android um, OS and they have the internal, uh, they have their Tango project, they have um, built with Lenovo the Mirage Solo headset and they have the Google Arts and Culture, the Google Classroom, VR stuff, they do a lot of stuff. So as you can see, all the fi top five tech leaders are already investigating in the future of cross-reality. And saying cross-reality, when we go back to the first step, the Gartner hype cycle, sometimes technology changes. So I just saw 3D TVs at the expo. Um, the 3D TVs, has anyone a 3D TV at home? I don't think so. But with the usage of augmented or mixed reality headsets, the 3D TV is now getting more, more cooler to use because you can manipulate the 3D models and stuff like that with these headsets. Or you can continue watching your content on the 3D TV. And this will happen to virtual reality also because the borders will disappear between augmented virtual stuff like that into a cross reality future. Number four is another learning from the VR Expo that the B2B adoption already takes place. <laughs> so there were these big car manufacturers, as I said in one of the last videos, and they have already integrated virtual reality into their meetings, their virtual meetings, into their trainings. They do the whole employee education, the whole employee training with virtual reality, and also in the design processes. And if you get the borders bigger and bigger to uh, even augmented reality, there are even more solutions. But we're talking only about the virtual reality and in the B2B area it's already very big implemented in so many internal things. And the last thing is another great topic, the last reason of so many, I could tell you so many more reasons why the VR hype, the VR industry isn't over, is the arcade games, the arcade halls. Maybe you know the arcade halls from the 90s or I think in the 80s they were some as well and they're still there where you can play some video games or you can play some arcade games, stuff like that. And now you can see a trend coming from Asia actually with VR arcade halls where you can play VR arcade games in multiplayer alone in these arcade halls. So you pay some entry fee and then you go inside, choose a game and play with your friends or play alone like, I don't know, Beat Saber or some shooters, stuff like that. And this is a really big trend in the VR industry right now. So, and it is not only a trend, it is only, it's already settled. So, so many people using it. I met a family from Japan and the mother, age around 50, told me that she goes twice a week playing arcade games with her friends in VR. So, it's way too beautiful to do something else now, but to be honest, I'm only out for a lunch break, so maybe I should continue to do stuff. It's too beautiful, look at it. Jeez.
But anyway, all these topics are just some reasons why the VR industry isn't over. That if you combine all these things which I already told you, it all leads to one thing again, which is <laughs> our reason number one, the innovation hype cycle. Back to the Gartner innovation hype cycle. <laughs> So Gartner released earlier this year, I think end of March, the innovation, the official Gartner innovation hype cycle of 2017 and augmented and virtual reality had passed the critical mass at that one. But I think this is not correct. I think we are still in the early majority. Um, I can see the negative press. We can see the disappointment with Magic Leap and we can see the lack of content and the quite good hardware, but not on that perfect level hardware. So it takes a little time, but I think we will reach the critical mass pretty soon, maybe in two years. And I think maybe in three years, we will be on that plateau. So, and then this process will be probably very slow, but intense. <laughs> and as I said, with the example of the 3D TVs, we can have this a process of innovation with virtual reality as well. And I think this will take place because as I said so many times, the borders between AR, VR, MR will disappear and we will have a cross reality. And with the cross reality, we will improve our lives on an everyday basis. So, these are my last words. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thanks if you watched until now. And I have a little gift for you because you watched until now and I like you very much. <laughs> with this code, you get a 20% discount off the tickets of the World Summit AI, one of the biggest AI conferences in the world, which takes place in Europe this year in Amsterdam. And I will be there. And with this code, you will get the 20% discount on your ticket. And I would love to see you there. Have a little chat, talk about AI VR. And that would be pretty cool. So see you there. Bye bye. Tschüss.